stable now, that's what the experts say. They say a meltdown's possible, but it's safe enough to stay. Well, this kind of stability ain't safe enough for me. I'm gonna pack up all I can and move my family. No new blues, no new blues, no new news, no new news, no new blues, no new blues, no new news, no new news, it's time to choose, refuse to lose. Hello everybody, uh, if you, welcome if you just got here, I'm Bob Miola from the Berkeley Peace and Justice Commission, and uh, first I want to introduce um, our first speaker, Jackie Cabasso, the Executive Director of Western States Legal Foundation and a member of Nuclear Free California. Hello. So though I'm better known for my nuclear weapons abolition advocacy, I got my start working against nuclear power. In 1976, I went door to door collecting signatures on the Nuclear Safeguards Ballot Initiative, which passed prohibiting the construction of any new nuclear power plants in California until a permanent solution can be found to the problem of safe disposition of highly radioactive spent nuclear fuel. That problem is no closer to being solved than it was in 1976, and fortunately that law is still on the books. Now in the aftermath of the continuing nuclear disaster at Fukushima, it's time to take the next step. In fact, it's urgent. It's time to shut down and decommission California's aging, leaking Diablo Canyon and San Onofre yeah. nuclear power plants before the inevitable earthquake strike and replace them with clean, renewable, decentralized, non-nuclear, non-fossil sources of energy. Western States Legal Foundation got its start way back in 1982, providing legal representation for nonviolent activists arrested protesting construction of the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. I was arrested there myself a number of times. In the early 1980s, Western States, as part of the anti-nuclear movement in California, shifted its focus from Diablo Canyon to the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and from nuclear power to nuclear weapons. Over the years, Western States has increasingly sought to link nuclear disarmament with global and domestic issues of peace, justice, and sustainability. With Fukushima, we've come full circle. In May of last year, Two months after the beginning of the ongoing Fukushima nightmare, I was at the United Nations in New York with a small group of Japanese atomic bomb survivors. One of them commented, in 1945, the United States dropped atomic bombs on Japan. Now we've done it to ourselves. There is nothing good about nuclear power. Nothing. Nothing. I'll say it again, there's nothing good about nuclear power. In addition to the certainty of catastrophic accidents and the resulting massive releases of radiation that do not respect city, state, or national boundaries, there are routine emissions at every step of the nuclear fuel chain, from mining, milling, and enrichment of uranium, to fabrication of nuclear fuel, to routine operation of nuclear power plants, to storage of spent fuel. These releases always endanger public health and safety. In addition, at both the front and back ends of the process, Nuclear materials can be diverted to make nuclear weapons. Nuclear power powers the bomb. Moreover, nuclear power is incredibly expensive and capital intensive and highly centralized. Nuclear power plants take years to build and have a limited energy production timeline. The dangers associated with producing and processing nuclear materials and the extremely sensitive nature of these materials due to their inherently dual use capacity necessitate a level of secrecy and security that is fundamentally anti-democratic. Nuclear power benefits the infamous 1% who know that it's such a bad economic gamble that they won't even consider building new plants without federal loan guarantees and a Price-Anderson Act that caps a utility's liability for an accident at $10.8 billion. And there's no way to safely dispose of or sequester from living things in the environment the highly radioactive spent fuel that remains deadly for more than 100,000 years. The same number of years that the human species as we know it is believed to have existed. The U.S. has an estimated 77,000 tons of such high level radioactive waste and the amount increases every day a nuclear power plant operates. Nuclear power is not a solution to global warming. While it's true that the fission 
of enriched uranium in a nuclear reactor to generate energy produces no carbon emissions, every other step required to produce nuclear energy releases carbon into the atmosphere. Finally, nuclear technology has come to be viewed by the international community as a currency of technological modernity. And while the nuclear power and nuclear weapons infrastructures in the United States are for the most part separate, this is not necessarily true in potential aspiring nuclear weapon states. And over the long term, that includes every country with nuclear power. We must do our part to delegitimize nuclear power and nuclear weapons and make renewable sustainable energy the new gold standard. We don't need nuclear power. We don't need it in California or the rest of the world. A landmark report published last spring by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the United Nations body of the world's leading climate change scientists, concluded that renewable energy could account for almost 80% of the world's energy support within four decades if governments apply themselves, if there is the political will. That's our job, to create the political will. The United Nations has declared 2012 the International Year of Sustainable Energy for All with the goal of supporting universal energy access by 2030. This comes in recognition of the fact that hundreds of millions of people, especially in rural areas, do not have access to affordable, reliable, and clean sources of energy. A new report by the International Renewable Energy Agency has found that energy access through renewable energy technologies can generate significant employment, reaching the objectives of sustainable energy for all could create almost 4 million direct jobs by 2030 in the off-grid electricity sector alone. As my Japanese colleague Akira Kawasaki wrote in a recent commentary, quote, to summarize, the lessons learned from Fukushima for the world's energy future are as follows. The energy system symbolized by nuclear power generation not only has high risks regarding safety, it is also centrally monopolized and prone to wasteful spending. It is necessary to establish a system with local community participation and ownership built upon renewable energy sources founded on traditional wisdom. It is these responsible, sustainable policies which will provide security and accessibility for future generations. Excuses of lack of sufficient technology are no longer relevant, and such a crucial policy shift is indeed possible with sufficient political will. What happens in California has ripple effects across the country and around the world. California has an opportunity to lead by example by renouncing nuclear power and making a shift to clean, renewable, and sustainable energy. That's why it's important and right that the Berkeley City Council tonight adopts the resolution to decommission California's nuclear power plants and transition to green, non-nuclear generation sources. Thank you.